This video is on exponentials and logarithms. This example is we're going to write the inverse for each function. We're also going to state the domain and range of both functions. Now, when we're dealing with exponentials and logarithms, converting is, all, is a nice way of being able to write the inverse if it is not in a function format, if it is not in function notation format, because this is in a y equals or f of x equals. If it was just equal to a value, it would be different to convert it. But because we have the letters y and x, we have to solve inverses by doing the entire process instead of just converting. So before we begin, before we start doing an inverse, you actually want to determine your domain and range from the original graph, and then we can find the inverse domain and range before we even find our inverse equation. So this first example is an exponential. An exponential goes left and right forever, but it has an asymptote at the k value. So our domain, our domain for this original exponential, since this is an exponential, it goes left and right forever. So it will be negative infinity to positive infinity. But the range has an asymptote. Because our this value is still positive, it's still going to go up. The asymptote is going to be at this k value, that minus 8. So negative 8 has an asymptote, so it's going to be an open bracket because it's never going to hit that negative 8 but it will keep going up forever, so it will go to positive infinity. So it will never go to negative 8, and it will never actually go below negative 8 either. So our asymptote is at negative 8. So we can go ahead and write the inverse domain and range because we have the original. So the domain of our inverse will be the same as our original range. So we'll have an asymptote at negative 8, and it will go to positive infinity. So that means that our domain left and right it will not go left forever. It will stop and then keep going down. Our range will have to become our original domain, which is negative infinity to positive infinity. So again, the inverse will have an asymptote on the x value, or the h value. Now we can go and find the inverse equation, and then we can look to see if our domain and range is correct for those functions. So our first step in inverses is to always make sure f of x says y. So I'm going to cross this out, f of x, I'm just going to turn that into a y. Because now we need to switch the x and the y. So where I see y, I'm going to put an x. Where I see an x, I'm going to put the y. So I'm going to have 5 to the y minus 8. Now I can convert. So in order to convert, you have to get your base and its exponent isolated because we want we always want our base isolated so this minus 8 needs to be moved to the other side so we actually need to add 8 before we can convert so this will become x plus 8 is equal to 5 raised to the y now that we have an exponential the inverse of an exponential is a logarithm so I'm going to write out the word log because that is what we're converting it to we need to know the base. The base is what's holding up the exponent. That's your 5. The 5 is the base of that exponent. So it's going to be log base 5. I can go ahead and put my equal signs over here. Now I need to know what goes into these two spaces. Now the other helpful hint that we had learned, so we learned the base is always the base, and the exponent will never touch the log. So our exponent is y, I cannot have it touching the logarithm, so I have to put that y value over here. That means that what's left is this entire x plus 8. So I'm going to put that in parentheses. That entire x plus 8 goes into our missing space. y is alone, therefore we have found the inverse. So we would just rewrite this into the correct format. So it's going to become f inverse of x is equal to log base 5 of x plus 8. Now if we remember, logarithms should have an asymptote at the h value for the domain because it's not going to keep going left forever. If we solve for that, that would be x plus 8 equals 0. 
we would subtract the 8 and get negative 8. So our domain is correct. We have that negative 8 asymptote. So our inverse, we got the base and its exponent alone before we converted it. So if we're going to convert it into the other way, we would have to get our logarithm and what it's connected to alone. That's why it's important to have those parentheses as well. Now on this next example, this is already given to you as a logarithm. There's a couple of different things on here. You have a negative 7 in the front, but you also have multiple things inside the parentheses. So we need to use that. The negative out front, remember it reflects over the x-axis. So that will actually affect our domain because it's not going to be shaped the same way. Since this is reflecting over the x-axis, your domain, it would normally be graphed something like this. But now it's going to be, because it's um, reflecting over the x-axis, but we also have a negative in front of our 2x that's going to reflect over the y-axis as well. So it's going to end up going towards this way. So that means our domain is actually going towards the negative infinity and it's going to stop at our asymptote. Because of this negative here, this will affect our domain this negative would potentially affect our range. In a logarithm, you have an asymptote in your domain, but your range does not have an asymptote. So this negative seven does not affect the range in this problem at all. Our range for this logarithm is still going to be from negative infinity to positive infinity. But the domain will change. We have to take this inside, because this is where our h would be, and we have to solve for that x. So we would take that negative 2x plus 8 and equal it to 0. We would need to solve. Negative 2x is equal to negative 8, so x will equal to a positive 4. That's your h value. So we actually have the asymptote at 4. The negative on the inside of the parentheses affects which direction it's going left or right. So normally it would go towards the positive infinities. Now since there's negative, it's going to go towards the negative infinities. So for our domain, we would have negative infinity and to that positive 4, there's an asymptote. That means that our inverse domain and range, so the inverse domain would be the negative infinity to infinity. And our inverse range will be negative infinity to a positive 4, but never touch it. So we're going to have an asymptote at the y value of 4. So if we go through this and find the actual inverse, we can then check our domain and range as well on our inverse. So always the first step, make sure you see a y instead of an m of x, and then you can switch your x's and y's. So I'm going to have an x equals negative 7, log base 6 of negative 2y plus 8, close parentheses. So just like with, with the exponentials, we have to get the log and its base alone. The thing is, is that this logarithm is attached to this parentheses, so we have to keep it together. But this negative 7 does not belong. So we need to get that negative 7 away from this logarithm. In order to get that negative 7, that is multiplied to it, so we want to divide by negative 7. x divided by negative 7 is negative x over 7. Equal to log base 6 of negative 2y plus 8. Now that the logarithm all the way to the end of the parentheses is alone, we can convert it into its inverse format. So it is a logarithm that's going to an exponential. So remember the two helpful hints is the base is always the base. The base is a 6, so on the exponential, the 6 will hold up your exponent. 
Now that exponent is what's not touching the logarithm. This is attached to it, so it is touching it. The negative x over seven is not touching the logarithm. So that negative x over seven becomes your exponent. Negative x divided by seven will equal to, the only thing left over is this entire negative two y plus eight. We have it converted, now we just need to solve for y to be able to have our equation. So we wanna subtract the eight. We cannot subtract eight from the actual six because six has an exponent. So we would have six to the negative x over seven minus eight is equal to negative two y. Then we want to divide by negative two on both sides to get our y by itself. We'll end up with y equals a negative, or sorry, we'll have that six to the negative x over seven minus that eight, that's the value outside, divided by that negative two. So when we have y by itself, we can write it back as the function m inverse of x. So m inverse of x equals two. Six divided, so six and the negative become a negative six to the negative x over seven. A negative eight and a negative two, that's gonna give us a positive eight over a positive two because this negative went to the top of both of them. Now we don't wanna try, we're not gonna try and simplify this any further because of that six is attached to that exponent. So we're just gonna leave it like this for right now. Now for the range, it should have had an asymptote at four. If we take our K value, which is that eight, but it's also div divided by that two. So eight divided by two is four. So that's that K value. So that inverse is correct. And our domain and range for our inverse is also correct. So again, this one was a little, little different because you had to solve for the actual x to get your h value for your domain. And because there was a negative inside with your h that affected your domain. This negative seven would have affected the range if it was already an exponential, but it wasn't, so it did not affect the range on this problem.